Hello everyone, I am Lady Lynette Williams, First Lady of Salem Bible Church, and I am so excited about this project that we have been tasked to show you about. So you met Pastor Joe. He talked about the importance of having sustainable food. He talked about the importance of our Canaan Farms, which is the only registered fresh food in the 30318 area code because our church is in a food desert. So not only is our church registered to have the only food option, fresh food option in a food desert of 30318, but you heard him talk about how we grow this, these uh, vegetables, how we tend the garden, and then we take all of that fresh food and we give it out to the community. So, and then after uh, Pastor Joe talked, then you saw Farmer Fred, my friend Farmer Fred, he talked about how you can start your garden, whether it's a micro garden, if you live in an apartment, or if you have tons of space and then what that looks like. You went with him to the store to actually get all of the stuff. So now it's time to take all of that stuff and actually prepare your soil. So whether your soil, again, is in a micro garden in your apartment or home or house or condo or town home, or if it's where you have plenty of space and land to do whatever, wherever you want, he'll show you both of those things. So make sure to sit back, relax, get some notes and be ready to be wowed by Farmer Fred and all of his tricks and tools that he's gonna show you. All right, Farmer Fred, you're up. Hello family, Fred Walker from Canaan Farms once again. We've made it back from Home Depot. We've got our supplies. Now we are ready to assemble our raised garden bed. Take a walk with me over here. What we got, we have uh, two by eight by tens or two by eight by fours. And what we're going to do is assemble this raised garden bed here. We're gonna show you how to pre-drill it, put the screws in, then we're gonna go over to the garden and show you how to fill it. What we're using here are deck screws. You wanna use something that's going to be more solid and hold your wood together. So these are deck screws. What we did beforehand, we pre-drilled the holes so it'll be easy for the screws to go in. And all you do is got your, you got your frame here. All you're doing next is putting the screws in. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Pre-drill your holes, it makes it easy for them to go in. What you want to do is come to the next side. As you see, you've got your raised garden bed. We're framing it up, putting it together, then we're going to take it to the garden. Fun. Always put fun into whatever you're doing. All right. Now, family, what we have just done, we have assembled a raised garden. We just did it on one side. You would mimic the same thing on the other side. What we would do now is go take a look at the land that we're gonna go ahead and put this raised garden bed on. Let's fill it up with some dirt, plant some veggies. Come on. Now, family, what we're gonna do, since you have already got an area that has good drainage, what you wanna do next is till up your soil. You gotta turn your soil so it can breathe. So let's go ahead and go through some of the motions of putting this electric small tiller in and tilling up the ground. So make sure when you're building your garden and investing in your, in your health for the future, invest in good equipment. Invest in your shovels, invest in your tillers. Uh, when you're building your gardens, you do not wanna use pressure treated wood. You want to use just regular pine wood. Pressure treated wood gives off a lot of um, uh, toxins into the ground and that will get into your food as you grow it. So don't use pressure treated wood. So what we want to do now, we want to till this up, get the ground prepared to plant our veggies. And let's see how this ground looks. This is an electric tiller. It's very light, it's very mobile, and you can go to work with it. Let's see if we can get it going here. Oh, yeah. It 
if you look at this soil, this is some good soil. Look how light is fluffing around. That's why when you buy your soil from Home Depot, you want to make sure you get good soil that has, that's light and you don't want to use topsoil. Look how deep and rich that soil looks. Till the ground up good, real good. Okay, family, we've got our seal, we've got our soil tilled up. Now, this is the soil that we bought from Home Depot. We've mixed it into the earth soil, and this is what we've got right now. Now, let's clear the bed and make it even. As you're clearing your bed, if you have weeds, grass, just go ahead and pull it out. Rake everything inwards towards the garden so your soil stays inside. You're trying to make it nice and even. Now, as you look at the soil that we bought from Home Depot, if you look at this soil, look how light it is. Look how light the soil is. Top soil is not like this. Even if you clay it together, it still rolls out of your hand. And the reason that is a good example because water can flow through your roots and air can flow through it. And that's what you want for good growth. You want to even your beds out. Now, this same applies for your micro garden. For your micro garden. If you had your micro garden and you didn't have a raised bed, this is what you want to do with your micro garden. Come over here. Let's take a look at this over here. Now, if you remember when we bought this from Home Depot, we said we were gonna drill a hole. And what is the hole for? For drainage. This is a little bucket. We got a hole, the little holder here and the planter. I was thinking about it. If you're gonna plant some good veggies like uh, pole beans or something, make sure you invest in a bigger pot. That way it holds more dirt and it gives the roots much more room to grow downward. So if we were micro garden on the back porch, on the patio, this is what we would do. We'd get some of this soil. Take a look at the soil that we got. Remember we talked about nutrient-rich soil? Let me pour it in here so you can take a good look at it. Now, when you look at this soil, look at the nutrients in it. Look how light it is. These little white things are time-release capsules that over time, when the harvest season and the growing season goes, they release some types of nutrients and fertilizers that keeps the plants neutralized and fertilized and growing healthy. So if we were micro gardening, this is what we would use at this stage right here. Now, since we're in the micro garden, let's go ahead and show you how to plant one of the plants if you were micro gardening. Now, if you are using plants, this is actually a cucumber. If you are using these, these are called transplants, meaning that they have already come from seeds to seedlings to plants. You don't want these to stay in the, in the uh, container too long. Let's take a look at this. And the reason why, if they stay in the container too long, the roots begin to wrap around each other and that will eventually choke out the plant. So once you buy these, have the intention of putting them in your ground or put them in your micro garden in the next few days. What we want to do in a micro garden, we want to pinch the bottom of this so it comes out like that. Now, if you look at that plant, 
If we had to let it stay in there another week or so, it would have wrapped around and around and around. Now, our micro gardeners, this is how you do this. You want to make your little hole here and you want to pinch a part of this off to get that root from the wraparound stage to the growing down and to the earth stage. You want to plant that down and you don't want to pack it. You just want to make sure that it's stable where it is. Actually, you could put two in there, but I just put one in there to give you an example. And you don't want to pack it. You want to make sure that the dirt is around it loosely and the water flows through it. Now that's the micro garden stage of it right now. Now let's go over here and plant one in the raised bed. That's one cucumber in the micro garden. Then we'll come back and plant the rest in the bed. Also, our focus today is on three types of seeds. We're going to be working with okra. We're going to be working with bell peppers. And we're going to be working with cucumbers. Those are our three seeds that we're going to be working with. And if you remember, I told you about the time zone. If you look at the United States map, each color has a time zone depending on where you live on when you should plant. So make sure you look at that. If you're up in the north, I mean, you can't plant in March because it's probably still cold. So look at the regional planting chart on this and it'll give you an idea when to plant in your region and your area. Let's take a walk over here to our raised bed and let's put one or two in the ground over here. Now, what we have here, it is called a crook neck squash. Crook neck squash, we're going to use the same type of idea of planting in the ground as we did with planting into the pot. We want to first make sure that the ground is good and loose. And you saw we just tilt this up. So what I would do is just put one down, pinch the bottom and let it slide out, pinch the bottom so the group goes downward, and I just put that in the ground loosely. Let the dirt stand it up where it's gonna go, and just loosely put it in the ground. Next, what I would do is this. I would take all of them out to see how my placement is going to be. You don't want them too close to each other, so you wanna space them out accordingly and you want to space them out differently. So each has its own growing area that you don't space them in too quickly. Bunch them up on one another. And this is how you would do that. You play around with it to ensure that you got the right consistency and that helps in your growing. Space one here. Space one here, and we'll put the last one in the middle. Now that fills up your bed right there. So if you look at the crook neck squash, the maturity days, it's about 53 days. Full sunlight. So in about 53 days, 50 days, good water, good sunshine, we're going to have uh, some uh, crook neck squash right here in this area. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Now this is how you space it out. You can do it any way that you would like, but this gives good growing consistency. Now, if we had it like this, the plants would start to get tangled in together, but at least you're giving it a little room and always try to plant your plant in the direction you want them to grow. This plant was planted this way. Now, one thing about crook neck squash, they are runners meaning that they are going to probably run outside of the garden till about out here. You're going to have plants from the plant all the way out here. So what you would like to do is turn it inward so that the plants are trying to grow inward. That way you can control it a little bit better. So that takes us to our next step, which is planting all the cucumbers. We showed you how to do the micro garden. And now we're gonna put these in the ground. We're gonna put those in the ground. We're gonna come back and water 
and then we'll take you to the next stage. Thank you. Okay, family, we've got all the supplies. We made our raised garden bed. We filled in with dirt and we have planted some veggies, micro garden and the raised bed. Our goal now is to ensure that we water these veggies very thoroughly. If they lay down, that's fine. What you also want to do is just not water the veggie itself because the land around it is soaking up all the water that it can find. So you want to water the whole bed. You want to soak where you just plant it. And let me show you something about the, about the um, soil that we bought. Come get a close up of this. When we water this soil, watch where the water goes. It goes directly into the plant. Look how, look how quickly the water absorbs into the plant. It's not setting on top. It's being absorbed very quickly. That means that your soil is light and it's easy for water to get to the root. Same for the micro garden. We got to make sure that we water that as well, even if it sits down right there. And one of the key things on the micro garden is this, to ensure that water is flowing out of the bottom. And that's what we want. So that's what we do on the micro garden. We're going to let that sit and we're going to continue to water the garden. I mean, soak it well. So what you want to do is just continue to water the garden. Now, this is what I do. I don't, I water every day for the first week. The second week, I water every other day. The reason I'm doing that is to teach the roots to go deeper into the earth to look for water. If you water every day, they're going to sort of like stay where they are in the plant world and just look for water. But if you water every other day and they're not getting drenched the way they need to, the roots automatically respond to go deeper into the soil to look for water because the water comes up through the root, through the stem, and into the foliage of the plant. So go ahead and water them every day for about a week. Now we got rain coming in tomorrow, so that's gonna be fantastic. That's gonna be fantastic. We got rain coming in the next couple of days. So these are gonna grow tremendously. So a day after that rain, I won't water, but the next day I will to keep my soil nice and wet. Well, families, one thing about it, I told you also about using the sprinkler versus the water hose. Now, we have saturated this in about five minutes. If you had a water hose, all you're doing is just touching the top of it and not getting to the root of it. It would take hours for this sprinkler to get that root wet the way that it needs to. If you got the time, a sprinkler system is good. If you have the financing, install an irrigation system. So either way you want to do it, we want to get water on these babies so they can grow. And what you also want to do, since these are crookneck squash, these are going to be runners. So we're going to try to keep them contained within the garden bed. And as time goes on, we'll show you some results. But we're focusing in on three veggies, okra, bell peppers, peppers, and what was the third one? Cucumbers. You know, sometimes when we plant plants and veggies, we plant the wrong type of veggies or fruits in the wrong season. Make sure you look at your package. In the cool weather season, it's good to plant your lettuce, your collards, romaine lettuce, things of that nature, iceberg lettuce collard greens, turnips, because it's not as hot. So you've got to be conducive and be aware of the type of veggies that you're planting and the season that it's going to plant and harvest in. A lot of the plants that we have here now, squash, zucchini, bell pepper, uh, we've got some eggplants, and we also have uh, basil, yellow peppers, 
All these are good for spring and summer. Spring and summer, these are real good. Um, we've got some squash coming out over here. Uh, we've got some watermelons in the back. Uh, we're gonna replant some more green peppers over here. So we've got our work cut out for us, but if your plant does not grow the way that you feel like it should have grown or given off the harvest that you feel like it did not give off, don't give up. This is a learning process. You know, you're not in a, you're in a process and it takes time for things to acclimate to its new environment. I mean, plants have to acclimate. They've been seeds for so long. Now the seeds have become seedlings. Now the seedlings have become plants. So you, they have to get acclimated to their new environment. So you give them, you talk to them, you water them, you nurture them to like you would a small child. They can feel the love. It's a spiritual thing. So when you connect with your plant, your plant will connect with you. Just continue to water and educate yourself on gardening. Educate yourself on the plant that you're trying to harvest and trying to plant. Education is key, not only in life, but in gardening as well. If you could smell this basil, I mean, this basil has a terrific aroma to it. Uh, it's time to pick some of this basil. Go ahead and make you some good squash spaghetti. Add some basil to it and uh, make it happen. Healthy eating, healthy choices will save you money in your gardening from having to go to the grocery store. And those are some of the things we're working at. All this is organic. All this is organic. No pesticides or insecticides. We're all organic here at uh, Canaan Farms. So once again, family, we're gonna go ahead and water. And one key fact that I would leave you with, try to get your gardening done early in the morning. It's hot out here today. So try to get your gardening done early in the morning, as early as possible, or late in the evening as possible. But make sure that you water your veggies so they can stay healthy because they have to drink a lot of water in order to grow up to be a good harvest. So once again, this is Fred from Canaan Farms, thanking you for your support. Thank you, Dr. Joe, for all that you're doing for the world. Uh, we're gonna to continue to support you from the village at Canaan Farms. We love you. We'll look forward to speaking to you again and have a great day. See ya.